Hey guys, what's up? Jeff here again, touring your fitness in the right direction, and today I wanted to go over with you guys some exercises to be wary of or even avoid if you want to prevent getting a disc bulge or a disc herniation, pretty much. When I refer to a disc bulge or disc herniation, in case you guys don't know what that is, really quick, you got your vertebral bones stacked up, and in between each vertebral bone of your spinal column, you got an intervertebral disc between them, and that intervertebral disc, it acts as a shock absorber. It is to, it adds extra height to you, and pretty much in the middle of each disc, you got an inner gooey layer called the nucleus pulposus, and you got a harder outer layer called the annulus fibrosus, and over time, even from just sitting in bad posture all the time, that inner gooey layer can, layer can begin to push out on that outer layer that can cause a disc bulge. Many people, they don't even get symptoms from a disc bulge though, because in order to get symptoms, it has to press into nerves that come out of your spinal cord. So if, the, if it's doing that, you get pain, tingling, numbness, and burning sensations, potentially going all the way down your lower back, down into your foot even, so you don't want that. And uh, if it bursts out though, that's called a disc herniation, it's more serious, you should likely, you're gonna know if you have that and you should go see a doctor, because you'll get those symptoms. But anyways, let me give, give you guys some exercises to be wary of first, then I'll give you exercises to avoid. So the exercises to be wary of, I think they're good exercises if they're done with good form, but many people, they don't do them with good form. So the exercises I'm talking about off the top of my head, squats, deadlifts, leg presses, because you could round your lower back in all of them potentially, and when you round your lower back and you add heavy weight, that's when it gets dangerous, because it's that inner layer can be pushing out on that outer layer now with a lot of pressure, and that can run into problems. So with squats, some people get that butt wink, their low, lower back rounds, not good. With deadlifts, the lower back can round, that's not good. And with leg presses, if you come down too far, your lower back can round, not good. So you want to keep your lower back straight on all of those. So those are some exercises to be wary of. Now let me talk about exercises that you should avoid. So first exercise that you really want to avoid, seated ab crunch machine. Because when you sit down for that exercise, if pretty much you're already sitting down so there's already pressure in your lower back and then you come forward with heavy weight that's not going to be good if you go into that crunch position repeatedly you're already in that seated posi position and now you're adding that forward movement it's a lot of stress on your lower back i would avoid that because it's going to cause issues another thing to avoid i see a lot of people doing these things called deficit deadlifts where they they put a platform a small platform underneath their feet like they might take a weighted plate put it underneath their feet I see that guy blah blah doing that a lot, so yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. So, because that adds extra, it's more you're going to have to go down further. I think it's not worth the added risk. Maybe you feel like you're activating certain muscles more, but you are adding risk because you're going to have to go down further. There's more potential for you to round your lower back, so you probably shouldn't be doing that. It's just an unnecessary risk, so I'd just to stick with normal deadlifts. And while we're on deadlifts, I see many people. They do like single arm deadlifts. That is probably the worst thing you could possibly ever do because when you do that, you're, it's a motor pattern you're not used to, number one. Number two, it's way too easy, easy to round your lower back and twist at the same time. Rounding your lower back and twisting is the worst possible thing you could do. To, that's very likely, that's like the worst position to get a disc herniation, twisting and rounding. Never do that with heavy weight especially. So yeah, definitely never ever do that. Another exercise you want to avoid, sit-ups. Because when you do that, for one, sit-ups aren't an ab exercise, they're hip flexor exercise. So that's not what you think it is. And also, the main muscle, you're, a major muscle you're using with sit-ups is your iliopsoas, your strongest hip flexor muscle, attaches directly to your spine and your lower back. So when you do that, it's really pulling on your lower back, you're rounding too, and it's it's going to cause issues over time. Uh, if you do sit-ups a lot, I would stop doing it. it. This can really cause issues in your lower back, so I'd stay away from that. Final exercise I'd be wary of is good mornings. Pretty much you have the bar on your back, and then you hinge from your hips, you come forward, and you come up. Uh, I just think it's too easy to go into a bad position with that exercise. There's too much potential to make a bad move, and you could it's already stress on your lower back, and if you do it wrong, yeah, you could really run into issues with that exercise. I would just stay away from it. So pretty much those are the exercises I would entirely avoid. And obviously you should be wary of the ones I mentioned in the beginning, squats, deadlifts, leg presses. I think they're good exercises though, just make sure your form is good. But yeah, I just thought I'd go over those quickly. 
This has been Jeff once more, orienting your fitness in the right direction. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to my channel, all of that. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later soon.